If it's late and I'm in the bedroom, I don't want to speak a bunch of commands to the Google Assistant. People could be sleeping or I might just be tired of talking. And so it's nice to have the ability to swipe up from the bottom corner of my phone to get the Google Assistant. Say hello to all of our automators. For many of you though, that's a feature you don't have, but a lot of Android phones have an option that allows you to hold the power button in order to bring up the Google Assistant. From there, I don't even have to speak a command as I often tap over on the right hand side to bring up a keyboard that I can type into and get a response from the Google Assistant. What's great about this is that it always contains a number of regularly used commands that are filtered by the time of day or what I normally do at this time. So often it's a matter of two taps and I've executed my favorite command. But if I don't know what I want to do exactly, I can start typing and just like search results on the internet, I will get a number of commands that are either popular or that I have used before. So as I type in a word like play, I'll get a short, heavily curated list that's pretty likely to give me what I want. Hello automators. Thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today is part one of a two part series of the very best tips and tricks with the Google Assistant. What you should have noticed from the first tip is that I took you from something that is very obvious all the way to something that most people don't know and that is the general pattern that we will follow in today's video as we will get more and more complex as we go. Going back to that feature where we can type in instead of speaking, there are other aspects of Google services that we can quickly access if we bring up the Google Assistant within the Chrome web browser. Both searching by Google Lens and the ability to read a web page aloud are available instantly when you bring up the Google Assistant in this situation. You can tap on those to start them and for the web page reading feature you can also adjust the speed of reading. From AutomateLife.net, Automate Your Life, the Zeus 4-in-1 sensor custom device handler for smart things that I use. This custom device handler was originally created by community member Kevin Leframbois, K.R. Leframbois. The Chrome browser is made by Google, which is why we get the extra tools there. So this is a pattern that continues on Android apps made by Google. We can always ask to take a picture and that will instantly bring up the camera application, but you can get more specific, including asking for a selfie to use your front facing camera, a night sight photo if it's late at night, a portrait if you love that blurred background, a video, a slow motion video, a time lapse video, and even a panorama can be started all by using those voice commands. However, my favorite is the one I use the most, which is to ask for a screenshot to be captured because I can never remember which buttons I have to press together to do that on my phone. After you take those pictures and videos, the Google Assistant gives us an incredible level of searchability within the Photos app because you can ask the Google Assistant to show me my photos, but you can also add modifiers like from last year or with a dog in it or with a person's name. In order to get people recognized by name, you can go into the search section of the Photos app, add a name to a face that's up at the top, and from then on you will have that individual be recognized and when you ask for them, you'll get their set of photos. You can go into the search tab and almost anything in that tab is what you can search by, which opens up topics like holidays or your favorite pastimes, as well as giving you the ability to search for screenshots or where you took the photos. Then pile this all together and ask for a photo for people from a place and within a certain time frame like this. Show me my photos of Brett Bristow from Las Vegas in 2020. Once you've found the photo you were looking for, you probably want to share it. And so you can actually ask the Google Assistant to share this photo. It'll bring up a list of recent contacts, but you can also state the name of the person you'd like to share it with. The most common thing we do with our phones is to use them to communicate and the Google Assistant is a big help here. Sure, you can ask to see your new messages, but you can modify that command by adding the name of the person you'd like to see messages from. Show me my messages from Madeline. 
The nice thing about that request is it brings in messages from all of your messaging apps at the same time and you can instantly reply. Yes. Oh, good thing you found it. The same thing holds true with the Gmail application, as you can ask using modifiers like show me my email from three days ago, or from a specific person, or even use things like with an attachment from a specific person. Show me my email from Brian. Show me my email with attachments. Show me my email with attachments from Brian. Google Duo calls and phone calls in general can be made with the Google Assistant as you can reach into your list of contacts with a command. However, maybe the best feature around calls is that you can just call a business by the business name if it's local to you and you don't have to know the phone number. Call Red Swan Pizza. Google also has great integration with their calendar application and you have to set the default calendar that you're going to use most of the time in order to use commands like create an appointment. However, there are more modifiers that you can use like adding the date and time and of course you can ask about events but again you can modify and ask for different time frames with your calendar request. But you can get really specific and ask for things based on what they are named. For, so for myself, anytime I'm going to be meeting with someone, I will put that in the name of the calendar entry. And so if I ask for my calendar events named meeting, I will get all of those. A calendar entry is usually something that you create in order to bring a few people together, whereas a reminder is usually more personal. One of the things that I have found so powerful with reminders is that I can do the same exact things as my calendar entries, as I can push in dates and times to be reminded at, and I can also request a search to be done on my list of reminders. This has been very useful for me to manage subscription services and to make sure that I cancel them before that subscription payment date, as I can do a search for things like the word cancel. Show me my reminders named cancel. I've been talking a lot about homegrown applications that Google makes for their Android operating system, but it doesn't all have to be Android, and it doesn't all have to be the apps that Google has made. In fact, there's a fairly recent Google Assistant feature called Shortcuts. You can find it through the Google Assistant settings or even through the Google Home application if you have that installed. Open Assistant Settings. However, my favorite way to get there is just to say Assistant Shortcuts. Once you're in those settings, you'll find a ton of apps being listed, and likely at the top of those are some of the more recent applications that you've entered into on your phone. What's great is that if you have your settings set correctly, then the Google Assistant will know what you've done in those apps and will display a number of shortcuts that you could instantly create for those things you've recently done. If you scroll down, you'll find the full list of apps that the Google Assistant can help you with, and you can tap to go in and explore some of the shortcuts that could be created. All of these shortcuts can have the words associated with them modified to whatever makes sense for you you. So instead of me saying Twitter messages, I can say Twitter and the monkey man, if that happens to make more sense to me, which obviously it does. Many of you who might be trying this right now are going, wait, I don't have any apps available in the shortcuts tab. And that's because you need to look in the Google Assistant settings for the section called your apps. Make sure that you're allowing the assistant the permissions it needs to create these shortcuts for you.
Many of you who have an iPhone are probably feeling a little left out at this point, but you don't have to feel that way. You can use the Google Assistant generally through the app and that works, but here are the two ways to make Google work for you on iOS. When I open up the Google Assistant app, I can request something that I normally do. And when I do that, Siri and their Shortcuts app both learn from what I've done. If you don't have the Shortcuts app, you can search for it on the Apple App Store or you can search for it on your iOS device. Once you have the app, make sure that within the settings for the Google Assistant app that you allow Siri and Shortcuts to learn. This will mean that when you enter back into Shortcuts after having just used the Google Assistant, one of your suggested actions may become what you just said. There's another way to input whatever it is you would like into the Google Assistant using Siri or Shortcuts. When you choose the action within Shortcuts as Ask Google, then you will get a space to type in whatever question you would like to ask, except it doesn't have to be a question and it can truly be anything. This includes customized routines that you created in the Google Assistant, as well as more complex commands like playing music across many speakers or controlling groups of smart home devices. Even better than that is the fact that you could put two or three commands to the Google Assistant through a single shortcut with wait commands uh, in the middle to break up the execution. And whatever you name the shortcut is what you can say to Siri to execute all of this. Now, if you need more details on how to set all of that up, there's a link to a video for connecting Siri and Google Home together and getting the most out of those two. But let's head back to more detailed commands with the Google Assistant, as many people don't know that they can control almost all of their phone's basic features with their voice. This includes turning on and off Bluetooth or do not disturb mode and the flashlight. Plus, Wi-Fi can actually be turned on and off and you can get to any of the settings by requesting things like Wi-Fi settings or Bluetooth setting. In fact, most of the settings on your phone can be pulled up instantly by asking for those. Those are great features and I can get to the location settings, which is great, but I think the more important thing is that we can use the location we're at with the Google Assistant. If I ask the Google Assistant, where am I? It'll bring up my location and then there is always a quick tap command to share my location. In fact, many of you will be able to say share my location, although as of late this one's been a struggle for me. The more important feature in my mind is that when I get to a place, I often want to be reminded of something. And what I've done personally is when I get to the grocery store, I want to be reminded to actually look at my shopping list because oftentimes I'm just blinded by the light and following whatever thing catches my attention. So I'll ask for a reminder when I get to a certain location. And the really neat thing about this is I can either tap work or home and get a reminder when I arrive there, but I can also set a location and then put in an address. However, there's an even better feature here when you go into the Google Assistant settings and look at the Your Places section. Here, if you add in your most frequent locations, then they become something that you can refer to in your Google Assistant commands. So when I say create a reminder for when I get to best grocery store, all of the information is already filled in because I've saved best grocery store in my list of places. Create a reminder named check shopping list when I get to best grocery store. The most common place that you're going to arrive is going to be your home because you can't go anywhere else without going home eventually unless you've done something terrible and that's your problem. 
but that location has been set in your phone. If you go into the your places section and this means that you can use it in a specialized routine. If you head into the routine section of the Google Assistant settings, many of you will find the household routines available for both when you leave home or when you arrive home. These are automatic routines and they will execute based on the presence of your phone as long as you enable all of the correct settings. For this one, make sure that you've installed the Google Home application and are using the same Google account as your Google Assistant. Then if you tap into settings, you should see a feature for presence sensing. If you haven't turned it on before, you should get the opportunity here and the same holds true if you go into routines and tap on one of those home or away routines if they're there. Once you have the process started, you'll be able to add other smart home devices into both of those routines to turn them on or off automatically based on you coming or leaving your home. This can set your home the way you want before you walk in the door and is an incredibly powerful feature of both Google Home and Google Assistant working together. Of course, that leads us to routines in general, which is one of the most powerful features with the Google Assistant. To get to your list of routines, you can say that to the Google Assistant. For those of you who use Google Home, then this list will be a little bit different, and that's because it's for the Google Assistant, which encompasses more than just your smart home gadgets. Down at the bottom, you will see your shortcuts for those apps that we just talked about a little while ago, and you can make modifications in this list to those. Up at the top, many people will not have seen these new suggested routines that Google is pre-creating for you to help you with your day. Of course, you can tap into any routine to edit it, but many people miss the fact that they can add multiple starters to every routine. This means that you don't have to exactly remember the statement that works to start your routine as you can add in multiple versions that are very similar. You can also add in a second starter like the time or sunrise or sunset to every routine so that it runs every day or a number of times a week at the time you'd like it without having to remember anything at all. Many people will go into the actions and they're guided by the basic sets of things that Google shows we can do. For example, you can play and control media, which means you can start things like music or the radio on your phone. However, there are a few things to do when you make a choice like that, including tapping on the words again to bring up options with that action. For music, we can add in things like the genre or the artist or a playlist that we have within our default music service. Of course, we could add in things like playing music from other services by adding the words from Spotify or from Apple Music to the end of that statement. That is, as long as those accounts have been connected to our Google Assistant, which we can find out by hitting music settings on that same page. If that's not enough, then you can say on specific speakers or on a group of speakers as well. So your commands can get quite long within any text box that you have access to. Still, the most useful fe feature period within routines is the one that says try adding your own. That's because anything you found out today that you could say to the Google Assistant, you can type that right here and have that occur as part of a routine. This is pretty much the culmination of the Google Assistant because it allows endless opportunities. Some of those opportunities I'm going to give you in part two of our series on tips and tricks with the Google Assistant, which you can see there, but that won't be released for another week. So if you're looking for a guide on using routines, there's a video there that will help you learn more about specialized routines. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.